Hi there, I'm Joshua Finn from J&H Aerospace. This is the build video for the P1B0 Skywalker. This is a kit that we import from China. These are really nifty flying airplanes. Sorry about the box, I grabbed one that uh, had been beaten up a little bit. Um, it is a smaller version of the P1B1 Sky Voyager. So we're going to do, because the uh, there's not a uh, an English translation for the instructions for this. We're going to do this build video, show you how to put it together. There are instruct pictorial instructions on the back, so you can uh, navigate the construction using that. I'm going to show you a little bit, some slightly different construction techniques for parts of it, though, that I prefer. Um, just my personal preference, and you can decide if you want to, um, what, what you want to do. So let's uh, let's get started with the build. So first of all, to open up our kit, pop open here, and in spite of the condition of the packaging, there's a little dent in the uh, wings there, but in general these are packed surprisingly robustly. So a couple things you want to look for, make sure you have your propeller assembly. This is a reverse Montreal stop folding propeller. It is a fully functional uh, uh, propeller of that type. Uh, you'll have a little fuselage tube. Uh, note that this little collar may or may not be in place. Do not glue it in place at this time. That's one of the later steps that you'll want to, that you'll want to do. Um, there is a wing kit here. We'll go ahead and pop it open. As we'll begin construction on that fairly early in. Uh, and be careful when you're doing this that you don't squish the, the flying surfaces or anything of that nature. And my wife is just jumping in here and showing me what a complete idiot I am. So then, sorry about that show of utter complete stupid. So you have uh, some double-sided tape, and that's the part where we'll, we'll deviate from the instructions a little bit. Rudder, uh, horizontal stab, and make sure that you have a left and a right wing. And like I said, this one got dinged up. This is one that did not pass uh, quality control because um, the male people uh, had fun with it. Let's see. Uh, this is your tail boom. Make sure you've got that. This is a rubber motor stuffing stick, so um, you can survive without it, but uh, much easier if you, if you have it and use it. And we'll open up our parts package here. So you're going to have some rubber. Uh, we do sell replacement rubber on our website that is the um, American uh, Tan Super Sport. The reason these kits do not include Tan Super Sport is because in China they cannot get that rubber. Uh, this is the spinner cap for your propeller assembly, and we'll go ahead and stick it in place at this time. Um, I recommend lubricating the propeller assembly on the uh, Sky Voyager, but on this little airplane I don't because it simply is not necessary. These um, are slightly different design and it doesn't require lubrication. Um, before you say, why don't you use that instead, those are more fragile. This is your wing mount assembly, and we will go ahead and slide it on. Let's make sure we put it in the correct orientation so it needs to be facing. If you notice, there's this collar is towards the front of it. You want that towards the front. This is the front of the airplane. Um, you may wish to glue this in place later because it does fit. It's a loose friction fit. You'll at least want to mark where it goes because it will wander around. Um, but once you get the airplane trimmed, you probably want to go ahead and, and, and lock that in. We'll go ahead and this is your tail cone assembly. There is some flashing on it. So um, go ahead and make sure that's all removed. And you should go be able to go ahead and test fit it into place. Now it's going to kind of wander around, so you want to go ahead and for now we'll push this um, rubber peg through. Um, 
And once you do that, it tightens everything up back here, so everything locks basically on that. This is your stab and uh, rudder mount. So the way this is going to work is that we're going to fasten this assembly in here. Now, be careful what glue you use. You can use the double-sided tape because there is double stick tape there. Uh, like I said, I'm not as big of a fan of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Gorilla CA that I know is relatively foam safe. It's not perfectly so. And what we're going to do, and you'll notice the surface is curved, and so that's why you typically use double stick tape on this, is because I'm going to press that surface up against there. And again, be very, very careful what CA you use because some CAs can and will eat into this foam. Um, and in fact, keep it away from the edges because I don't even completely trust the Gorilla CA. Um, it is mostly foam safe, uh, but it does react somewhat. And I'm actually going to have to go get some CA accelerator because what I'm seeing here is that the um, coating here does retard the hardening process a little bit. That's fairly common with um, various CA glues. So we'll, uh, I'll be right back. Actually, no, CA is, the CA fairy is bringing my CA glue. Not my CA glue, CA hardener, something, I don't know. Words, they're hard, really hard. And sorry, my children are being told to calm down and they're not. So, sorry for the uh, screaming and hollering, kids fighting over a box. So next you're going to take this rudder, and again you can put double stick tape, I'm going to glue it right here. So, uh, one other thing, make sure that you get the newer CA hardener, some of the older ones are not foam safe. Um, the, I think almost all of the CA hardener that's you know, currently being produced is foam safe. I could be wrong about that. Um, this actually says somewhere, yeah, it says 100% foam safe. That um, is not exclusively true. There are some foams that are still not safe from it because weird sauce. All right, so make sure that's glued in real nice. And now at that point, we can go ahead and slide that out of the way before I tip it over. One second. Alright, so what we're going to do is make sure you're oriented so that this pin is horizontal, stab is horizontal, and this just slides right in there. And I do recommend actually gluing this in place because um, it will loosen up over time. Basically, you're just going to slide this until the boom meets up with the end there. Now, the next thing I would recommend is go ahead and glue this boom into the back here. And again, make sure your orientation is correct. Peg is horizontal. You say, why can't it be vertical? Because when you put it in a winding stooge, you want your tail to be horizontal. And the rest of your airplane. So there you go. Fuselage is assembled. Um, at this time, we can actually go ahead and lock in the thrust ring at the front. So turn this to where that the propeller folds back horizontally. There's a little alignment key right here. Now we're actually going to pull the whole thing back off. Squirt glue all the way around. Let's stick it back on. And I'm just going to eyeball that it is indeed positioned horizontally right here. Because what's important is that your propeller be able to fold back like that because your wing leading edge sits right here. So the blades probably, depending on how you balance this airplane, the blades will probably fold back under the wing. And so you want that to be very accurate. And this needs to be pressed all the way up there to make sure it seats 
perfectly. Oh, that's what I moved, this guy. So we'll set the propeller assembly aside for now. Now it's time to move on to the wings. So we're actually almost done building this airplane now. There are little grooves here. Those are to bend slight airfoil into your wing. So you can actually come over here to a table and do that. If you've seen flight test foam airplanes, um, that's basically what we're doing here. Do the same thing on the other side. And the exact curvature is not really critical at the moment. The wing will kind of take a set and it'll be fine. So at this point, we're going to place this forming assembly on top of the wing. It's very important it goes on the top, just like that. Now again, uh, you can use packing tape actually to secure this, which is uh, what we're going to do here. I'm going to make it a little easier on myself. I'm going to tack glue this guy in place. Do this from underneath, line it up a, uh, slightly off to one side of the center line there. You want it parallel to the center line, of course. So we're just locking that in. The reason we're doing that is so that it will stay put while we hit it with packing tape. under strict orders to return my wife's packing tape when I'm done. So we're just going to lay that down there. And we'll curl it down around under the edges, front and back, just like so. Try not to get a wrinkle in it like I just did. But there you go. Now we just repeat the same thing over here on the other side. You notice there's no carbon spar on this wing or anything like that. It's just a simple little airplane. Same thing again. Looks like I may need two pieces of packing tape to really curl around the edges. I got a little skimpy with it. Oh, there we go. Just enough. is now assembled and I can take a rubber band and pull the rubber band around and the wing now locks in real nice just like that. Now if you're concerned about losing the rubber band because that topic has come up before um, that's not the way to do this. We'll slide it in around here slip knot. And now I'm knocking everything around. There we go. Now the wing is positioned and then we can get a look at how everything goes just like so. So, let's go ahead, we'll pop the pin loose here, pop the tail out of the airplane, and we're going to measure out some rubber for this plane. I'm going to actually make up a four-strand motor that's 
the uh, manufacturer of these planes watches our videos and gets a kick out of our... Uh, here in America we have a gross obsession with insane amounts of power on our airplanes. And, um, yeah, we're using way more than the design amount of rubber. Now this rubber's actually got a, a score line in it to split it, um, and as you see, I did not do that. So I'm going to tie this off. And I'm just going to glue that knot just where it crosses, not anywhere else on it. And again, we'll trim off the tail because there's not much room inside that little fuselage. Um, and I'll be right back because we need to put some um, some uh, rubber lubricant on them. Okay, so at this point we're going to this is Dow Corning 33 uh, uh, silicon oil, Molly coat oil, whatever you want to call it. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to rub some of that silicon oil into this. Do not use anything petroleum based or that you think might possibly be petroleum based. Uh, Armor all does work, it's not as effective. So what we're going to do is again, this is one long loop, twice the distance from nose to tail. Um, it's actually slightly shorter than that. Um, and there are a variety of reasons for that, but the bottom line is we don't want it flopping around in there. So I'm going to put the knot back here at the back. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to put my hook up front here. Slide it through. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect. And now I'm going to capture these two separate loops. Maybe. Maybe I'm not. Stop being so stubborn rubber. What you want to do is actually I'm going to use a piece of wire here to ensure I get this right. So now we will slide this on through. Now we have captured that end of the rubber. And to keep the other end from getting away, we're going to go ahead and we're going to stick it on our propeller there. Now, wing again is loose. We want to, we're probably going to put some tape or something there to make that wing kind of tighten up. We'll see. Um, now, this part is a little fiddly, so what you want to do is grab this, this thrust ring and then use it to push forward on the propeller like that so you can take up some of the tension just like this. There we go. And the propeller locks like it's supposed to. Now again, you're going to want to tighten up this wing, get it positioned so the wing balance, the plane balances right about the, the middle of the wing, and then you'll experiment with it from there. Um, I'm actually going to put it there, and I am going to make sure we're lined up, and I'm going to glue it in place. Um, probably not the best practice but that's what I personally am doing. And then I'll use um, nose weight to adjust from there. So with that, it's assembled and it's ready to go. This has been the build video for the P1B0 Skywalker here at J&H Aerospace. Check links in the description for more information. We'll be putting up a trimming video on this airplane soon and we hope to see you at the flying field. Uh, again, you can purchase it down there in the link in the description. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. Hi, I'm Josh Finn. This is Hope. We are J&H Aerospace. If you like this video, hit the like button. Also, how about subscribe to our channel and check out jhaerospace.com for new free flight products and all of the tooling that you'll need to build them. Thanks for watching.